The lubricant enters the metering device from above and flows to the right hand end of piston A. Piston A is moved to the left under the pressure of the lubricant, causing the lubricant ahead of the left hand of piston A to be dispensed to outlet 2. Once piston A has reached its left hand final position, the junction channel to the right hand end of piston B is opened. The lubricant which arrives from above also moves piston B to the left, causing the lubricant quantity ahead of the left hand end of piston B to be dispensed to outlet 7. Once piston B has reached its left hand final position, the junction channel to the right hand end of piston C is opened. The lubricant which flows from above moves piston C to the left, causing the lubricant quantity ahead of the left hand end of piston C to be dispensed to outlet 5. The channel at piston C to the right hand end of piston D is now open. The lubricant which is fed from above moves piston D to the left, causing the lubricant quantity ahead of the left hand end of piston D to be dispensed out of the metering device via outlet 3. In phase 4, piston D opened the junction channel to the left hand end of piston A. The lubricant flowing in moves piston A to the right, causing the lubricant quantity to be dispensed to outlet 1. In the subsequent distribution sequence, pistons B through D are moved from the left to the right, one after the other. A complete distribution sequence is finished and a new cycle can begin. When the lubricant supply is interrupted, the pistons come to a halt and the lubricant is no longer dispensed to the lubrication point. When the lubricant is fed again to the metering device, the cycle begins from the point where it had been interrupted.